Russia has declared that it's ready to release Ukrainian grain exports, but it has put the onus on Ukraine to solve the problem of resuming grain shipments by demining its ports. And it's estimated that that could take months. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has been holding talks with his Turkish counterpart on unblocking grain shipments. Mevlut Kabusoglu appeared to support lifting sanctions on Russia's exports in exchange. Now, he called Moscow's demand legitimate. It's not clear if that continues to be a condition. Moscow has blockaded Ukraine's port since the war began, preventing tons of grain from leaving. Now, this has led to soaring global food prices and put millions of people at risk of starvation. Mr. Lavrov says that the first step lies with Kyiv. It must demine its ports to allow vessels to pass through. Now, Russia's top diplomat also says that Moscow won't use the export corridor to launch offensives on Ukraine. Turkey has offered its services to escort the grain convoys. Biz Türkiye olarak e, bu planı e, makul buluyoruz e, ve uygulanabilir bir plan olarak görüyoruz. Tabii her iki ülkenin hem Rusya Federasyonu'nun hem de Ukrayna'nın da bunu kabul etmesi gerekiyor ve bunun detaylarını görüşmek üzere İstanbul'da bir toplantıya ev sahipliği yapabileceğimizi BM'nin teklifi üzerine e, söyledik. On the ground, Ukrainian forces are being beaten back in Severodonetsk. The regional governor of Luhansk says that the defenders may have to retreat to stronger positions, but he vows that they will not surrender the city to Russian forces. Moscow has been focused on taking all of Luhansk region. Severodonetsk is one of the last areas Kyiv still controls. Authorities say the invaders have stopped everything else to concentrate their efforts on this city. For more, Philip Crowther joins us live from Lviv. Philip, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, he says that Kyiv's got to demine its ports so that vessels can be allowed to carry grain out of Ukraine. It sounds like a complex and perhaps even dangerous mission if, if they were to do that. Is it even something that Kyiv would consider at this point? And if they do, how could they proceed? It looks like almost an impossible puzzle, doesn't it, this one? A very hard job there for everybody involved and, of course, not necessarily directly involved or interconnected here. Uh, those, those meetings between the Turkish Foreign Minister Çavuşoglu and the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov in Turkey, absolutely key to maybe potentially at some point down the line, not immediately, that will be impossible, to get those 22 million uh, tons of grain that is currently in Ukrainian silos somehow out of there. There are essentially two ways standing in the way of these exports uh, right now. First of all, uh, the fact that Russia has blockaded the Black Sea. Secondly, the presence of those Ukrainian mines. And there are two things also standing in the way of a deal. Uh, Ukraine is afraid that Russia might take advantage of a corridor that might be established with Turkish help, that there might be Russian attacks, most notably on the port city of Odessa uh, in the south of the country. And then Russia has said in the past that it wants sanctions relief if there is to be a corridor for grain exports. And that is something that has been roundly rejected, not just by Ukraine, but also uh, by governments like the United Kingdom or the United States as well. Now, here's one other thing uh, that is interesting and came out of these meetings in the press conference from Turkish Foreign Minister Çavuşoglu. Uh, he says that there might be a possibility that he is optimistic that there could be peace talks in the future. It's been a while uh, since there have been delegations from Ukraine and Russia meeting. The last time was in March. And the chances of there actually being a face-to-face -face meeting between the president, Zelensky, uh, and uh, Putin seems nigh on impossible right now. And meanwhile, Philip, a deteriorating situation in the eastern side of Ukraine. The situation in Severodonetsk is looking worse by the day for Ukrainian forces. What's the latest that you have for us about what's happening in this region? Well, the truth is that it's almost impossible to pinpoint who is winning, essentially, on the ground or who is in control of more of the city of Severodonetsk right now. Things have been uh, moving back and forth uh, quite a bit. One thing is for sure that the Ukrainian military, again, is essentially outperforming uh, any predictions that there might have been. It is, after all, facing a military that, at least on paper, but also in terms of the firepower 
it has brought to the front line in Donetsk is so, so uh, much stronger. Uh, now, it's worth now looking at some of the images that we've been getting from the private satellite company Maxar Technologies. It gives us an, a look at that eastern Donbass region in Ukraine and the destruction that has been brought to a city like Rubizhne, first of all. You can't really see anything standing in that city anymore. It is complete destruction. And then when you look at some fields outside of the city of Sloviansk, these photos all taken on the 6th of June, by the way, well, you can see the artillery battles uh, that have been going on there. Sometimes sat satellite images are cold and they're distant by definition, aren't they? But these are heartbreaking scenes when you see just how much uh, has been destroyed. As to what is happening on the ground, well, we also always listen to, listen to the governor of the Luhansk region. Uh, he says that uh, Ukraine is still uh, fighting for every centimeter, but he also told my colleagues here at the Associated Press uh, that the Ukrainian army might have to retreat a little bit. That's the update uh, on the ground uh, in, eastern, uh, in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass region. Mm. Many of those areas unrecognizable from before this war Philip, thank you very much for that. Phil Crowther there in Lviv.